Good evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the sixth and final Wednesday night service during this season of Lent. Uh, next week, we're in Holy Week. We start with Palm Sunday, and then on Thursday of next week, Holy Thursday, we'll have a service at 7 o'clock here with the Lord's Supper being celebrated. And then on Good Friday, we'll have two services, one at noon and one at 7. And I just want to thank all of you folks who have been worshiping with us, especially from the Minnesota side of the border, uh, Fisher and Euclid. We also have a number of relatives from out of town and some students here from the university. And it's been a, a very... Uh, enjoyable time to fellowship together in this season of Lent. And tonight's theme is the thirst of our Lord. You may have had a chance to read the bulletin cover. We'll begin this evening with the Order of Vespers. It's on page 229. Please stand if you're able. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. You're welcome to be seated. We're going to sing selected verses of hymn 447, Jesus in Your Dying Woes.
Tonight's Old Testament reading is from the 55th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that you did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Our second reading is from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. O Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand for a very brief gospel reading this evening from the 19th chapter of the Gospel of John. We hear these words. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. O Lord, have mercy on us. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. We're seated for our next hymn, 435, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I encourage you this evening to take a Bible, if you have one in front of you in the pew racks or perhaps under the choir chairs, and open it up to the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. Tonight we're going to focus on the, the human need for refreshment. We all have experienced thirst at some time in our life, and thirst plays a very prominent role in the Gospel of John. So tonight, in the fourth chapter of John, we're going to take a look at this interaction between a woman from Samaria who came to a well and met our Lord Jesus there. So we'll pick it up at verse 7, chapter 4 of John, verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. When Jesus said to this woman, give me a drink, she responded not with a cup of water, but rather with a question. How is it that you... A Jew asked me, a woman of Samaria, for a drink. She was surprised that Jesus asked her of this favor. Because in Jesus' day, and we kind of get that understanding in that sentence or that verse within the parentheses, in Jesus' day, most Jews held racist attitudes towards Samaritans, whom they looked down on. They considered them spiritually inferior. And also recall the rather peculiar response that Jesus spoke to the woman. When he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And a little while later in the conversation, he said to her, everyone who drinks of this water in that well of Jacob will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Did you catch that? Water that wells up to eternal life and quenches eternal thirst. Later on, Jesus told a crowd, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture had said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. We're kind of in a predicament right now with the flood season upon many of us in this part of the country and having heard what floodwaters can do in other parts of the country. So we're no stranger to water. We don't live in an arid land, a desert but tonight, Jesus says to each of us, if you are thirsty, come to me. And yet, if you recall our gospel lesson you heard just a few moments ago, we heard that the one who promised living water that will cure all thirst was himself thirsty. The one who promised living water so that you and I will never thirst again hung on a cross, naked, derelict, dying. And just before he died, he cried out, I thirst. 
Behold the one who claims to be the well of living water, the fount of water welling up to eternal life. Behold the one who created waters that flow, rivers that run, oceans that surge, water tables that nourish, and springs that bubble up. Another time in the Bible, early on in his ministry, we hear that Jesus turned six large jars of water into the choicest of wines that anyone ever tasted. In fact, when the guests received some of that water that was dipped out of those containers with which the servants put water, and they knew it was water they put in, the guests commented, you know, you're, you're rather unique. Most people give the good stuff first and then keep the, the cheaper wine to the last, but you have saved the best to last. And just three years after performing that miracle of changing water into wine, three years later, nailed to a cross, he was so thirsty that he desperately craved even a tiny sip of sour wine from a sponge fastened to a hyssop branch. Our Lord Jesus Christ, second person of the Holy Trinity, who took on human flesh, who became incarnate, one of us, so that he could be tempted in every way as we are, thirsted, just like we do. You know, it's almost ironic that the Creator relied on something so simple, something so abundant as the element of H2O, water, in which to live. As true man, his mouth was truly dry. He thirsted. How about us? For what do we thirst? Probably not a drink of water. That's far too ordinary. But might we at times thirst for money when it's tight? Or for power or success? Wish I was like that famous person. Or maybe comfort, I have it rough, Lord, you know, I could use a little smooth patch in life. Or maybe for something to numb the pain or dull the senses. Something to help us forget the cruel realities of living in this kind of divisive dog-eat-dog -dog world. Perhaps we thirst for more likes or friends or on Facebook or Instagram or maybe more respect from our classmates or teachers or professors or maybe a pay raise at work. But we all thirst for something. And unlike us who thirst for things, Jesus thirsted for us. And because he thirsted for you and for me, he took on human flesh that hungered and thirsted. The, that very same flesh was beaten abused, mocked, ridiculed, spat upon, and finally nailed to a cross and died. Jesus wasn't thirsting so that he could live. He thirsted because he had taken on flesh, all because he desired to save us. He hungered and he thirsted so he could die for our sins. And so behold the man who thirsts. The one who emptied himself so that we might be filled. The one who was cut off so that we could be grafted into the vine. Who thirsted so that you and I could be satisfied. He thirsted so that people might drink of that life-giving water he mentioned and never, ever be thirsty again. Behold the man who was parched and dried up so that we might find in him a river of life. He thirsted as he died so that we might never die a death like his. Abandoned by God forever. Behold the man who thirsted so that you and I might be satisfied in him. And only in him is our thirst quenched. Our thirst, even when it seems shallow and selfish, is really a thirst for the living water that flows from Christ and waters our soul. Our thirst is a call to trust in Jesus, who alone offers the water that will quench every thirst of ours. Until then, as we wander in this earthly existence between the old Eden and the new Jerusalem, our thirst still serves a purpose. In the same way that hunger kind of sharpens our desire for the bread of life, the body of Jesus, 
our thirst motivates our taste buds to desire something more satisfying than mere temporary fulfillment. Our thirst disciplines us to desire a heavenly drink that only Jesus can offer. And until our thirst is once and for all quenched with the eternal water of life, there's a river from this Lord's altar that can soothe our parched throats with the blood of him who bled and died for us on the cross of Calvary, who thirsted for our abundant life, who died so that we might have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. From the cup of the Lord's Supper flows a river that can give us a foretaste of an eternal quenching, a divine stream that can satisfy our deepest thirst. Behold the one who was consumed with thirst so that our dry lips could be satisfied with the drink of his blood for true drink. The one who thirsted for us, who bids us to come so that we thirst no more. The one who is the headwaters of a new drink, the river of life, the water for which we thirst deeply and from which we drink intensely. Behold the one who thirsted for you and I that we might be drenched and quenched with the waters of eternal life. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds focused on the love of Christ now and forevermore. Amen. We'll stand and continue now with the Antiphon on page 231. It's before you as incense. Please be seated during the offering.
Please stand and we'll continue with the singing of the Kyrie. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Almighty God, your Son thirsted on the cross for our salvation so that we might be satisfied forever. As we walk through this wilderness world toward the promised land of the new heavens and the new earth, sustain us with the living waters that your Son gives us in his word and sacraments that having received a foretaste of everlasting refreshment, we may point others to Jesus, who quenches our every thirst. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, your Son's chalice is filled with the streams of living water that flow from his spear-pierced side. Grant us a thirst for his sacrament. Having tasted his blood, which is true drink, we may be filled with his unending life and never perish. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.